homes to fall into. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the zoo's home safari. This afternoon we're going to be talking with um, or talking about two of our small cat species uh, that we have here at the zoo. They're located in the night hunters. We have the sand cat and the black footed cat. Now my fellow worker, uh, Rhonda, she's gonna give you a little bit of talk about the black footed cats. Then I'm gonna come back and talk about the sand cats. Hi, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about our two black footed cats. Uh, we have two females, and Nadine and Zola. Nadine is our older cat, she's 12 years old, and Zola is eight years old. Uh, they look very similar, and I know I get lots of questions about how do you tell them apart. One of the big things is Nadine is a little bigger. She weighs 3.5 pounds, so that can tell you she's as small as a house cat. Zola weighs three pounds, so that's kind of a hard way too, but Zola has a goldish brown color eye, and Nadine has these big, beautiful green eyes. And here they're gonna come out. The cool thing about black-footed cats um, is that they get the name black-footed cats, but it's not for the fact, if you see their feet, they're not really very black. It's the pads of their feet that are black. Uh, they are known as the smallest, deadliest cat of Africa. And that's because they have such a high ratio for um, catching their prey. Uh, in a single night, they can eat between 10 and 14 rodents, uh, birds, and even reptiles. Uh, one of the reasons for this is because they have an extraordinarily fast metabolism. So they have to keep uh, putting food into their little bellies. Their average is 20% of their body weight a day is how much they eat. Now, if you look at lions, they, their percentage of catching prey is about 20%, but our Blackfoots, who are so deadly, theirs is 60%. Again, they're the smallest cats. Um, they live in um, Southern Africa in the hot, dry regions. Um, and like most cats, they're fast, but these are actually the small, the fastest small cats. Um, you know, I don't think they're gonna catch a cheetah by any means, but they do live in the same areas with cheetahs. Uh, and like all cats, they have extraordinary senses. And for them, theirs is their, scent, their sight. They can see approximately six times better than we can see. And to me, that's just amazing. Uh, they can, uh, like I said, their prey can be uh, small rodents and they catch birds because a unique thing about this species is that they can jump over six feet into the air. They're not great climbers, but they're super fast and they can jump so high. And they tend to stay on the ground, but they do climb. It's not like they can't. We gave them some crickets for enrichment. It's one of their favorites. Uh, it's part of the zoo's program that we keep our animals um, uh, engaged, you know, keep their minds engaged and things like that. And I think this is Zola who's up here. And Nadine was around. But you can see, if you watch her taste that cricket, see how low she stays to the ground? That's a true hunter. I mean, so the next time you see them, think about how deadly these little cats are. I mean, even with us, we would love to tell you that they're like house cats, but they're not like house cats at all. Only in size. And you can see they have these really big ears, but they're not super big. Like the, like the sand cats or like a fennec fox. What that is, is though the openings inside their ears are really big. And their ears are smaller, so that staying on the ground, they don't get lots of stuff in their ears. You know, they don't get bugs in their ears and things like that because that little ear keeps things from getting inside. 
They have pink skin. Uh, they do not have spots or stripes on their skin um, as compared to a tiger. And like I said, they, uh, as compared to like a leopard uh, or even um, an ocelot where they are up in the trees catching things. Okay, we're gonna take some questions now about our blackbirds, and hopefully I can answer them. <laughs> Mariah wants to know how long are they pregnant? Uh, they have a, a shorter uh, pregnancy, so it's like 60 to 70 days. Unlike our bigger cats, like snow leopards, where it's 90 to 100 days. Vera wants to know, what do they eat? Vera, at the zoo, they get a variety of small prey items along with a, a specialized meat diet. In the wild, they can eat anything from mice. Um, they love birds. They'll even eat reptiles because they have to keep feeding that little belly. Um, one of the biggest things they can eat is um, a rabbit. And you think about a rabbit in comparison to them, and that's pretty big. Ison wants to know if they shed. Ison, yes, they do shed. Um, they're, most of our cats here, from our snow leopards to our tigers to all the cats, they shed. Um, they go through their shedding season, and if you come in and the cats look a little rough, like their coat looks a little rough, it's usually because they're shedding. Jacob asked, do they have sharp teeth? Yes, Jacob, they have very big canines um, for their size. I was hoping maybe one of them would yawn for you so you could see. And they have very sharp claws. I mean, they are, you know, little predators. Chloe wants to know, are they able to purr? Um, they are able to purr, Chloe. If a cat can't uh, roar, then they can purr. But the truth is, I've never heard them purr. Rebecca wants to know if they're in danger. They're on the vulnerable list, which means their numbers are decreasing. Black-footed cats, up until recently, haven't been studied a lot in the wild and because they're so secretive. And they're in the building of night hunters, so they are nocturnal hunters. They only go out at night. So finding them is you know, not an easy thing to do. Our last question for the black-footed cat is from Patricia. She wants to know, how long can they live? Patricia, they can live between 10 and 15 years. Again, we only have um, information about animals in human care. Uh, we don't have great numbers yet on the animals in the wild. Thanks. Oh, welcome back to me. I might, in case you don't remember. I can talk about the sand cat. It's one of our small species of cats. They are unique species since they come from a very arid location. Sand cat is a clue to where they come from. They come from arid regions, deserts. They have a lot of special adaptations that help them to live in an arid location. So let me introduce our cats before we get talking about them. We have two in here. We have Sadie who is currently over here. She is the younger one, she is three years old. And there's, there's Naja. She is 10 years old. Now if you're here at the zoo, if you want to tell them apart, Naja is a little bit bigger than Sadie is. And her coat's a little bit darker on her back. Those are kind of the key factors she's gonna look at. Now, sand cats, they live in an arid region so they have some good adaptations for living in a sandy, arid location. One is uh, they really don't drink in the wild. In the wild, they get all their moisture from their prey items. But here in the, in the zoo, they will drink whenever they get thirsty. You notice those big ears on them and their faces are almost flat. That's because their basic hunting skill is their hearing. They like to make a hear, uh, listen for their prey. You also notice on the front of their ears, they get a little lot of hair that helps keep sand and stuff out of them. Also on the bottom of their feet, they have long hair to help protect the bottom pads of their feet from the hot sand. When you get a chance to have one, um, their feet are really very soft. 
Now, they have a gestation, which means they're pregnant for about 65 days. And their prey in the wild can be just about anything that they can catch, including crickets, which they're having fun with now. One of their main prey items where they come from is gerbils. I know a lot of people have pet gerbils out there. Sorry, but that's one of their prey items, and your pet gerbil came from someplace in the wild. And I think that's one of the prey items that takes them. The sand cats don't have, there's a few predators that will prey on sand cats. Um, there are snakes, uh, jackals, and um, I've heard eagle owls, or, predator, or birds of prey, have been known to take small uh, kittens. There are 36 species of cats in the wild, and most of those are small cat species that people don't even know anything about them. So one of your homework assignments, see how many of the 36 species you can look up and come up with. All right, I think we're ready for some questions on the sand cats. Yeah, Owen wants to know, is their, sur is their fur soft? Their fur is very soft. Maya wants to know, do they like water? Like, do they swim? Uh, I think they're a typical cat where they're, they don't come from a location where there's a lot of water. My thought would be no. There would be your typical cat that would kind of shy away from open water. But they do drink, they do all that stuff. Um, but as for, I've never had them in a situation where they would actually be able to swim. I know we've put tubs of water in here with some uh, um, fish in them for enrichment, and they will go in and scoop the fish out. Chloe wants to know, what is their favorite food? Uh, their favorite food is mice. Mice, well, there's two of them. Mice and chicks. That's one of their favorite foods uh, that they get on a regular basis. Lucas, in the wild, do they live um, a solitary life or in a group? Most cat species, or a sand cat, like most cat species, are a solitary, um, live a solitary lifestyle. Uh, the one cat species that doesn't is the lion, which forms a social coalition. Um, and uh, cheetahs actually will form a coalition of uh, siblings and that will hunt together. But sand cats, once they grow up and, and are away from mom, they're pretty much on their own. Jasper is curious if they ever eat fruits and vegetables. We try a lot of different forms of enrichment to see what they would like. Um, I think we've tried things like grapes and that kind of stuff. Sometimes just the novelty of the item, um, they will chew up and eat. Um, but as for anything else, I really can't say. I don't think we've really tried a whole lot of fruit for them. Rowan wants to know if you can pet them. Are they friendly to you guys? We do go in, we do go in and clean with them, but they're not pettable. They are wild animals, so you have to respect that. They're, they're one of the cat species that seem to be uh, pretty easygoing, um, not overly aggressive towards people. But there is a borderline where you can't get close to them, you can't pet them. So, no, we don't can't pet them. Kirk wants to know, do they have hairballs, like a house cat? Yes, they do. Cats can have hairballs. No matter what cat you are, you can have a hairball. And that's mostly because they're grooming themselves. And they groom themselves. And Rhonda talked a little bit about they shed. Well, cats will shed, and they'll get hair in them. A lot of times, um, if you have a house cat, uh, people want to think your house cat is sick because they'll go out and they'll eat some grass and they'll come back in and they regurgitate it up on your floor, which you go through, you have, why are they sick? They're not sick. It's kind of, like, kind of a natural response to help get that hair out of their system. Well, then we'll eat some grass, that'll help collect it, find it, and then they kind of talk it up. Karen wants to know, can they use a litter box, or do they use a litter box? 
We have had great success with a lot of our cats on the litter box. We use um, litter pans for, uh, I'd say half of our cats in here. Uh, that doesn't mean they use it all the time. Um, they do uh, scent mark their territory, which means they urinate on a lot of the stuff. However, they will defecate or poop in the uh, litter pan, which helps keep the clay just a little cleaner. Jillian wants to know what is their best sense? Their best scent is their hearing. They are mostly a nocturnal animal, and so having those big ears and that face is kind of almost flat. It helps. It's almost like a, a, a satellite dish where everything just kind of focuses into those ears. Um, so they need to have real good hearing uh, so they can hear um, their prey scurry through the sand, that kind of stuff. Um, and then their, uh, their eyesight would be the second choice. You gotta, you gotta be able to see it to get it. Brett wants to know if they are endangered. They are, they're considered uh, near threat, and that's basically because of habitat destruction, like happens in most of the world. Um, but because of the areas they come from, there's really not a whole lot of uh, study with them because they come from a uh, harsh climate. Um, however, I think most a lot of cat species, there is a little bit of risk on their populations. Our last question is from Claire and Max. They want to know, do they have any predators in the wild? They do have predators in the wild. Um, I have read that uh, uh, bigger animals, bigger mammals like jackals, um, uh, snakes, um, and um, there are birds of prey that will also eat prey on them. They don't have a great competition with, with uh, other mammals or other predators but then themselves can be preyed upon by some of the other animals. Oh, one last thing, and at the end of these, we always like to ask if you'd like to help the zoo out in a little bit of a way, there's a link at the bottom that you can click on to make a slight donation or a little donation. Every little bit helps. And we just want to say thank you. and for taking the time to sit with us and listen to us talk. And we hope to see you back here at the zoo sometime soon. <laughs>